Hey guys, my name is Ravi Sharma and thank you so much for joining me on yet another episode of Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. Now guys, we're doing something a little bit different today. I've actually got Nicholas from Aussie Money Man coming on the channel. We did a Zoom interview and you know, just a chat around how to invest. He's got a really good understanding with ETFs and shares. So I think for a lot of the audience that's watching here, uh, you know, it, it really will bring you a lot of value in terms of what we discuss. Not so much just from a perspective of, you know, what ETFs to buy and things like that. It's more so, you know, going out there and really building up those investing muscles around investing in general. So we have a discussion about property, shares, ETFs, and we also talk about his journey being on YouTube for a couple of years, him making it a full-time gig, and also, you know, building out an ETF portfolio so he could retire early. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks so much, Nicholas, for making the time, man. I've uh, really uh, enjoyed watching your content, and I know that some people out there that have ever watched any Australian you know, finance channels in Australia, I suppose, uh, definitely have come across your stuff. So welcome to the channel. Thank you very much for having me on. No problems, man. I think a, a really good place to start is sort of your story and your journey. You know, you've been on YouTube much longer than I have, and I love the fact that we can you know, work with each other, especially being Aussies, we talk about the Australian context. So uh, talk me through how you get started onto YouTube and what makes you sort of talk about stocks and shares and financial independence. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so for me, it essentially started pretty early at essentially age 13, um, where I basically had a lot of ambition, but nowhere to put it, you know, as a lot of young people do. And, you know, a lot of young people all the way up to, to usually the end of high school, maybe even throughout college have that issue. So I essentially just started um, researching essentially how to be successful um, and finance was obviously a huge part of that because if you set yourself up financially, you can use that as a tool to then um, allow yourself to do whatever it is that you decide to do later, whether that be sports or a particular job or having a business or sitting on the beach drinking, you know, pina coladas, whatever it is you want to do. <laughs> so essentially the first step for that for me was just researching online and essentially coming across the fire movement. Now, actually, initially, I th essentially thought I'd created the fire movement <laughs> Before I came across it, I thought of, hey, wait a minute, you know, if I just do all these things like make as much money as I can, save as much money as I can and invest as much as I can, I could essentially retire way before, you know, what is considered the average or preservation age here in Australia is 65. Yep. So now, before, before I you continue, essentially became somewhat infatuated. Before you continue, yep. fire movement uh, for the audience that doesn't know, yep. fire movement. Give us a two second snapshot. Oh, of course. Yes, of course, of course. So uh, FIRE movement is financial independence retire early. Essentially, it's the idea of via different methods, uh, essentially just setting yourself up to be able to retire early, setting yourself up for financial freedom, usually via uh, investments, um, income uh, producing assets, and essentially just allowing yourself to uh, retire earlier, um, something like that. Um, so pretty much for me, uh, you know, I essentially thought I came up with that idea, started researching it a bunch, talking about it on the YouTube channel, essentially sharing my research. I came across the movement eventually um, and then just, yeah, pretty much, uh, I guess, um, got really, really interested in it and wanted to share all my research on it. And that was everything from super to taxes to uh, how to save money um, and all those sorts of things. So that's essentially my story there. So what was the background behind, um, you know, before getting started into this? Did you have like a finance background? Were you doing something, you know, where you were working, you know, in trading or something like that? Or was it completely like a passion project? Yeah, fantastic question. So it was definitely just a, a passion project. So I started on YouTube actually at 13 doing IT stuff. But when I left school at 17, I initially... I had a scholarship I was going to take up, but last minute didn't end up doing that. So I was actually just working on a turf farm part-time and I just started doing the YouTube channel whenever I wasn't working. So it really was just a passion project. And for me, it was just a matter of picking a topic. So initially investing more broadly. All right, so what are the asset classes, you know, property, uh, cryptocurrency, um, uh, stocks, ETFs more specifically, for example, and then just sharing all my research in videos. So that's right. essentially ha how it sort of happened. That's amazing. And so as part of that, I guess, passion for YouTube, you started learning a lot more as well, because you had to do the research for the videos, right? And so it sort of looped around where you were taking more of the benefit as well, right? Absolutely. And, and, and that was the idea. And that's actually, it's great you mentioned that, because that's one of the big things I always like to mention when people sort of ask, you know, how do you sort of become successful? How have you become successful? And the answer is, you know, a big part of it is utilizing 
um, as much of, of the work that you're doing already to, to essentially allow it to compound. So you can do that. A good example is Brandon from New Money mentioned, hey, I really loved working out. So I became a gym instructor so I could get paid for working out. And that's a similar thing to what I was doing. I was doing all this research anyway. So I figured, hey, let's share this online. And no one was doing YouTube, um, Australian finance YouTube at the time, except for Brandon uh, New Money uh, from New Money now, which used to be um, Aussie Wealth Creation. So yeah, let's talk about that on YouTube, perhaps be able to make money from that in the future while benefiting from the research anyway. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting because I feel like our path around how we got to this point are very similar in the sense that you've gone in and you had that mentality. You're like, and same thing with Brandon. It's like, well, I work out. Let's just get paid to work out at the same time. And for me, it was actually with nightclub work. So, um, you know, I started doing promotions when I was like, I'm going to go out anyway. At least I'll get paid to go out and I'll have a reason to go out. So I, I think that's interesting how our minds are all working in the same sort of way. I think even for our audience, there's so many people that would love to do that. But we're, we're sort of in a society where we get told not to. Did you find that while you decided to go into your passion project that you had sort of family or friends sort of saying negative things to hold you back? Uh, fortunately, I'd actually say no. I mean, I'm a bit of a introvert, I guess you could say. So I, I, I've always sort of been someone that's sort of sitting at home doing my own thing and not really talking about it. So I was fortunate uh, that I didn't actually have that. Yeah. How that's about good. yourself? Um, I think not so much for the channel uh, and the buyer's agency, but I definitely did have it when I decided I want to become a DJ, leave my corporate roles and, uh, you know, go and promote at nightclubs. Uh, I definitely got some negative feedback. Um, you know, people turning around and be like, oh, who does this guy think he is? You know, he should have done this when he was 18. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess that's just the nature of, of what we do. You know, you take risks and uh, you try and block out the white noise. Um, so when we talk about investing, what does that mean for you? Because you invest in different things to what I invest in. And I think that's why it's interesting because I think my audience as well as yours, there's definitely people that invest in both stuff. Um, so let's, let's dive into what you're investing into and why you stick to it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm primarily invested in ETFs, exchange traded funds. So groups of stocks. Uh, and essentially the reason why I'm invested in ETF specifically is that it seems to be what the research supports. Um, and it's passive, meaning I don't have to look at it every day. I don't have to check it even weekly or monthly. Um, it's a very, very long-term thing, like a decade plus. Um, and the reason I'm in the stock market, so sort of more broadly, is essentially the biggest reason I got into it. So I started investing in the stock market at 18 is the low barrier to, uh, of entry, you know, compared to something like property, which as, as you know, and as a lot of the viewers will know, can be very hard to break into, especially as a young person, uh, but also just due to its more passive nature. So of yeah. course, property, there's essentially a lot more research goes into it, a lot more maintenance, um, where with the stock market, depending on how you invest in it, it can be very, very passive. And the reason I'm still invested in, in, in the stock market purely is, um, I mean, well, again, purely exclusively due to the reason for me that it is so passive. So I essentially don't want to take on that extra stress that comes with things like property. Um, and that's despite the fact that knowing if you want to have the best investment returns, property is undoubtedly the best because of, of leverage. So because of the fact that banks are willing to give you way more money at a way <laughs> lower interest rate for property than they are in the stock market. And there are things like the NAB equity builder, right? Which people may be familiar with. And it's, it's still, and that's the best that is available in Australia. And it's nothing um, in, uh, compared to what you can get in property. So I, uh, you know, it's on that point, like I totally agree with the passive element to it. You know, when you're, when you're in property, there's so much there that can go wrong. And what people don't, you know, realize or fail to realize is you can make a lot of mistakes and the mistakes are obviously multiplied because you're taking on so much leverage. You know, there's no other, like what other asset yeah. class are banks willing to give you 90, 95% debt uh, to the value of the property? Yeah. It's just insane. And, and I know that people, you know, sort of when they ask me, oh, should I get into shares or property? I'm like, you do both, right? If you can't get a loan and, the, you know, you don't have the capital, then get the ETF, get the shares and whatnot. That can still work for you. And I think it's just diversification reduces not only risk, but I think, especially when it comes to property, going through that with my journey, it's if, the, if, if the banks don't give you a loan, are you just going to sit there and be like, oh, I'll try again next year? Does that money just not work for you? And that's why I say, you know, try and get educated about different aspects and different asset classes. So it's interesting for you um, that you stuck to that sort of stuff. Um, so is the plan to continue building out 
the ETF portfolio, the share portfolio, uh, keep b- accumulating and building it up uh, to then eventually have a number in mind. Is that how it works for you? Yeah, pr- pretty much. I mean, look, don't don't get me wrong. My intention always was to eventually go into property, and it still sort of is. Um, but at the moment, like, should I not do that? My old, uh, alternate plan is to indeed just keep putting money in there, allow it to compound. And I've gotten to the point now where it's compounding, you know, amazingly, the sort of thing where you look at like 60K plus in capital gains, which is insane. Yeah, awesome. um, until, yeah, like you said, a certain figure, let's say maybe two, three million. And then you take out, you know, you use the, the 3% rule, the 4% rule, depending on who you talk to. And then you live off that. Yeah, so that's my alternate plan. Again, for me, it's just a matter of um, if I think I'm ready to sort of take on the stress and, and the work that comes with uh, leveraging into property. Um, and uh, yeah, but otherwise, something like that, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I think the the more important thing that I want, you know, people watching this video to really realize is it's not so much getting caught up with what you're investing in. It's the fact that you're investing, right? It's this mentality of breaking away from, I've just got to save my money and then eventually buy a house to live in. Like, I I call it the loser mentality or the traditional mindset that holds us back to going, let's buy one property for the next 40 years, pay it off and then sit on pension or live off our super. And I think you've taken a different route to how I've done it, but there's no, there's no sort of wrong way. It's just that you're in the market and you're learning constantly. Um, So I I find that super interesting, man. Uh, I guess knowing my audience is, uh, you know, looking at the stuff that I invest in, you know, real estate, crypto and things like that. Have you ever dabbled into, I guess, the crypto world? Yes, yes. Um, I'll just quickly comment on what you said there because look, you're completely right and I couldn't agree more. Breaking out of that traditional mindset is so important. And yeah, it doesn't matter what you're investing in, but if you're, like you said, constantly learning and you're just dabbling in it and you know, you've already broken the cycle, it will do wonders for you. Um, as far as crypto, yeah, a little bit. Uh, so I think I had like four or five grand in it. Uh, and that mostly just came from, I think one partner, like business partner at one point uh, was like, do you want to get paid in crypto for 500 bucks? I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So I chucked <laughs> that in there. And then a few referrals and it built up, you know, over the last two, three years. Then we've had that crypto crash. crash and I think I've only got like 2000 now, but yeah, for me, <laughs> Um, a little bit of crypto and I'm much like I'm not trading it, just buy and hold and just Bitcoin. Um, I do certainly have some belief in it, um, but yeah, I'm not risking any, any, anything major in it. That's sort of my view. Fair enough, man. Uh, I think for a lot of people I speak to, it doesn't matter what it is. If you don't feel comfortable with it, it's a point for you to start getting educated about the space, getting comfortable. And I think everyone's at different levels, right? It's, you know, you might feel comfortable investing in, certain asset classes just like i am and it takes time before you look at the next part or you know risk appetite is different for people and that's important you know where even we're having the chat and i'm like so bullish on crypto at the end of the day it's about you sticking with your strategy because if you have a strategy in play that's all that matters you know you you're not running on my goals i'm not running on someone else's goals etc and i think too many people get caught up in oh shit my best friend made this much of dogecoin like i should go and do the same thing and that's where people get wrecked, right? hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, like, you know, as you're sort of alluding to, if you don't have that plan, well, you're a lot more likely to freak out and sell when the market goes down. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have faith in it. Yeah. It's all about having a plan, being confident in the, as you said, your own asset class. Like for me with the stock market, when the March crash happened uh, yep. last year, I was down like 70K, but I was comfortable with that. Should I have been investing in something because my friend was or because someone on YouTube made a bunch of money from it? I probably wouldn't have been out of stomach it. So 100%. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, that's awesome, man. I, I guess before we, we wrap up here, um, you directly with my audience, what's, what's sort of your key message, key takeaway that you want to leave them with? I'd probably, uh, I'd probably just go with, um, cause I know everyone's at different levels, uh, but I'd probably just go with the fact that uh, something's always better than nothing. Uh, so, you know, this stuff can be so easy to get overwhelmed with, even if you pick one asset class, that alone can be very, very overwhelming. So I say, yeah, absolutely. Just make a plan and just start with something. I mean, a lot of people go, oh, I don't have enough money to invest. I've only got 50 bucks, 500 bucks, 5,000 bucks, whatever it is. I, I just say, yeah, absolutely. Do the research, start uh, and stick with it. Yeah. No, nah, I love that, man. Uh, I say the same thing, you know, it doesn't matter how small it is, you've got to build those muscles up. You don't walk into a gym, start picking up the heaviest weights, you've got to start somewhere. And once you get confident, you start building up those muscles, you're, you're doing great stuff. So thank you so much for uh, making the time to be on the channel. I know the audience will love it. Uh, and of course, you know, definitely go and subscribe to his channel. I think you guys will get a lot of value out of it. There's not many people I do collaborations with and, uh, you know, 
not just on the content side of it, but a, an absolute gem of a guy like we get along. So uh, definitely go check out his channel as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much guys for watching. I do apologize for the quality. Zoom is like that and you know, being in a, in a world like we are now, I try and bring you guys as much value as possible and you know, having a chat with Nicholas, I, I felt like he fills in a lot of those gaps around shares and ETF investing. So if you are new, wanna check that stuff out, definitely go and subscribe to his channel. On his channel as well, we've got the different version. So the opposite to his journey on my channel, I've got my journey on his channel. So I talk a lot more about property uh, and stuff that you guys may enjoy. Uh, so definitely go check that out. On his channel, he's bringing out weekly videos. So again, there's not many Aussie creators out here on YouTube. So definitely spread the love and support everyone. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you guys are interested in coming on the show, uh, sharing your experience, I think that would be really cool to start showcasing that on the channel as well or if you know someone that uh, you know would love to be on the channel. So definitely share what you are thinking. If you wanna come on the show, definitely just uh, email me. There's an email in the description below and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks guys.